Carlos, look, I've got my hydro set up at a basic level. I've now configured an outlet on my XP8. I'm liking what I'm seeing, but talking with you, you're like, Mark, let me show you some stuff because there's all this cool power stuff that you can do. And you're like, you don't need to know how to code anything. So take it away. Show me what you got. Let's start with something super simple. Do you have alarm set? Uh, I do on pretty basic stuff like temperature, um, nothing too fancy because I, I just had the pH probe on the hydros on the X4 and the temperature probe right now. So what if I told you that we, the hydros has a, an output that you can create is called an alarm output and then you can specify it to monitor your system. And if any output in your system has a particular alarm level, it will actually activate this output where you can turn on a light, you can turn on a siren, or you can even put something else in there that will warn you that, hey, I can't hear what's going on, but visually I'm far and I can see that there's a light on, there's the red light on, therefore something is going on with my tank. So I love the idea. I wanna know if I can take it a step further and be like, look, if it's a uh, yellow level outlet, you know, alarm, then do this thing. But if it's a red level alarm, then I want you to do that thing. So what you can do is you can create different, different alarms. So you don't have to create one alarm that does it all. You can create a, what we call a red alarm or a yellow alarm. So if it's a red alarm, turn on outlet, whatever. If it's a yellow alarm, turn on this other outlet. So it can actually create different different actions. Most people do it. I give you an example. Myself, I have I sleep in the third uh, third floor, so I can't hear the alarms. So all I did is, if there's a red alarm in the bedroom, there's a tiny little light. It's a tiny little red light, and it turns on. So I know that if if I wake up in the middle of the night and that light is on, that means something's going on with my system. I should go downstairs. And like there's like the red alarm is like the the red light on the wall with the big, you know, like death con golden eye alarm. And then like yellow alarm is like a lamp light that just turns on and you're like, oh, okay, that's off. But you know, death con five isn't happening yet. Yeah, exactly. You could do that, but you know, we could have like a Star Trek where it says red alert, red alert, and the sound starts going on. You know, we can have that if you have the speaker and, and, and you know, if you want to put, you know, your roommates and housemates through that, it's up to you. <laughs> Why not? I mean, I've been married for 17 years. It's time to test that thing, right? <laughs> All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the status screen and we're just going to go to the right of the outputs uh, label. There is a three, the horizontal dot. So we're just going to go and add output and we're going to call it red alert. Okay. And we're going to to create to the upper right hand corner. We're just going to go under type. And as you can see right at the first line right here, it says alert. So we're going to choose that. Now the alert level, what do you want the alert level to be? Do you want it, or what do you want it to trigger? Do you want this to be triggered by the yellow alert, by the red alert, or by the green alert? Let's try, let's do red alert. And then what we're gonna do is output device is where exactly am I plugging this siren, this strobe light, this little tiny little light, whatever you want to plug it in. So we're just gonna plug it into one of your um, uh, uh, AC outlets. And then we're just gonna upload the changes. So then all I gotta do is plug the siren into that 110 outlet. And if DEF CON 5 happens, it's gonna just turn on that outlet and then I go from there. Exactly. I don't have to remember which uh, input, you know, is triggered that it's gonna set out the alarm. I'm just saying if there's any red alert on any of those inputs, then send me the this turn on this outlet. I don't have to remember each individual input to put into any kind of line of code. No, you don't. So you don't have to program the red alert and you don't have to program the output. If I want to remove something from the from the red alert. So if I let's say, for instance, you know what, the temperature is OK and I don't want the temperature to trigger a red alert anymore. I'll just go to the temperature sensor, remove the red alert, make it yellow, whatever I want and upload my changes. That fixes it. That's it right there. Because now the temperature sensor is a yellow alert. Therefore, it's not going to trigger the red alert. And I don't have to remember to go back and take out a line of code on that outlet for the temperature at all. That is correct. Also, if you were to rename the temperature sensor or you were to rename the red alert, you don't have to go back and fix that in the line of code, the app, the Hydros app automatically ties those and, and takes care of refreshing the changes. What about having things happen beforehand? For example, I have an automatic feeder on my tank and it 
turns an auger which dumps out food and then the food gets swirled around in kind of a barrel uh, until it drops out of the barrel. So I'd like for that pump in the barrel to start up five minutes before the auger and the food turn and the food dispenser goes. That way that water's getting kind of primed and it's already got motion into it. And a flip of that, when the auger is done, I want that pump to spin for five minutes to flush in any food that may be in that barrel. All right, so let's do this. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually quite simple. Um, let's create the feeder first. So we're gonna create an output. It's output and it's gonna, call, it's gonna be called feeder. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it a generic output because I want something that is super, super simple to use. Okay, uh, generic means what is it? The hydros is equipped with, uh, with many, many presets that we have like chillers, temperature, uh, heaters, calcium reactors, but just like anything else, there is not one size fits all. So when, when none of the presets fit the particular um, action that you're trying to do, then you go to a generic where you can create your own. Make sense? So it's basically kind of write your own to make it fit for what you want. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I want a generic output. It has a schedule. All right, and the schedule also in output device, we're gonna connect the, We're gonna connect your feeder to outlet number seven. And then I'm gonna go to the advanced settings. Now, when do you want the, 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 the feeder to first turn on? So the barrel that mixes the food should turn on at 155, that way it's on five minutes before the feeder runs, the auger runs at two. Okay, so 1355. Okay, and then do you want it to repeat multiple times during the day or do you want it to just run once? Uh, let's have it run again at 6 o'clock. 13.55 to 6 o'clock, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the, um, the run time, we're going to make it 10 minutes because you want it to run 10 minutes. And then run count, we're going to make it 2 because you want it to repeat twice. And then the run interval, we're going to make that 1. We're going to make it 6 hours or five hours, I'm sorry. That's one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do upload changes and that creates your feeder. And now what we have to do is now we have to do the same thing, but we're gonna do it with the stirring pump. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new output and we're gonna call it stirring pump. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is it's gonna be a generic as well. We're gonna have it run on AC outlet number eight. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and has schedule, enable the settings, sorry, enable advanced settings. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start 10 minutes early. So if your feeder started at 1355, we're gonna start this one at 1345. And then we're gonna make it run for 20 minutes. So we're gonna make this 20 minutes. And then we're gonna run it twice. And the run interval is going to be pretty much four hours too. And that is it. So upload the changes and done. So now you have two outlets. One is your feeder, which will run at 1355 for 10 minutes. And then you have the stirring pump, which will start running at 1345. And then it'll run for 20 minutes. Click OK and upload my changes. And that's pretty much it. That's it. Then I'm done. You are done. You are done. That's it. So we got the red alert. We have the feeder. Anything else you want to do? Yeah. So one thing that I sometimes run into is you know, I have the XP8, I'm not using all the outlets. And it would be really nice just to have an outlet that's like constant on or consistently on. So it's like a, basically a plug in my fish room or around my tank that I don't have to go to the other side of the room and plug something in. I can just plug it into that outlet. So it's sort of having it on, manually on. Is there a way to create a constant on or always on type of outlet or always off type of outlet? Absolutely. I, I, actually, I, I already created that for you. There's an outlet called always on. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you real quick. Click on the always, always on. I'm going to go to the gear icon. And as you can see, the type is constant. So we already have it. Something that you're looking for that is constantly on, 
just go to the uh, presets and choose a constant outlet. And then the beauty about the uh, the hydros is that it tells you, it can actually set you, it, it asks you, do you want the outlet to be on or do you want the outlet to be off constantly? It, off seems kind of weird, but if you have a dependency where you want this outlet to be off all the time, except turn on if something else happens, then you need that constant to be off as well. So constant off, while it's not used a lot, it does give you a lot more versatility. That makes total sense. I'm loving this. Okay, so let's have some fun with this. Show me the geekiest thing that you can think of that you could put on this Hydros and you know, blow me out of the water on something, Carlos. It could be on your tank, something you think I need, just have at it. Okay, so I know that you have a calc uh, stir that is always that is running all the time and I know that you are adding this calc washer to your system at nighttime correct yep I do it at night to try to bump the pH okay let me ask you a question do you why not run it the entire day and run it when you when the pH is low run it when the pH is low so you don't have to wait until the middle of the night to keep that pH high uh, especially in the winter time when all the all the windows are closed and the doors are closed, you get that pH that goes down. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a I'm going to I'm going to grab your um, an always on outlet and I'm going to change it to generic. So I'm going to grab I'm going to change this to generic, and then what I want is I want an outlet that will turn on, feed my calc reactor or feed your calc reactor when the pH is at a certain level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the generic and put an input count of one. Now you see this field right here with this input. I can drop down on this input and select the pH probe. You already have a pH probe. Let's take advantage of it. So when do you want, what do you wanna keep your pH at? What's the highest you wanna keep it at? So let's say if it gets below eight, then let's start bumping it. Okay, so if it gets below eight, Let's go and head bump it. And then if it gets, as a, as a safety feature, if it gets above, above what, 8.4? Let's say that. So the next question is, you want this outlet, this generic outlet to be active when the pH is low or when the pH is high? Obviously, we want it to be low, exactly. So we just keep it there, low and there. And then you want... You don't want to schedule. We had it set for nighttime, but now since we are able to monitor the pH, you don't have to worry about the time of the day. It'll just do it, you know? But what about now? Kaltwasser has this tendency that it raises your pH, but it also raises your alkalinity. So if you had an alkalinity input into this system, if you have the IV, then we can actually increase the input count to two. And then under the input number two, we can select the alkalinity input. And then we can say, okay, I want the Kaltwasser to turn off if the alkalinity is above, what do you want to be uh, alkalinity at? Let's be conservative and say 8.0, because usually uh, that's kind of a top end for me. Okay, so what we would do is we would drop this, box, and you don't have this right now, but we would drop this box, it would have alkalinity, and then just like the pH, it would give us um, an option to select the, P the alkalinity range. So now you have this generic, this, this uh, dosing that is injecting water into your cut washer, and it's gonna turn the cut washer on, as long as your pH is below eight, and as long as your alkalinity is below eight as well. And then I can put on some kind of alert with this, like in an orange or a red, so that if it happens to run, it's DEF CON orange and something else happens on one of those outlets. Absolutely, not only that, let's go even further. You have Kaltwasser uses uh, fresh water, RODI water. Okay, so unless you're unless you're fancy and you have this water station that is huge and everything, you usually fill up the you fill up the RODI water that injects into the cut water that goes into your system. But I don't want the pump to run if the RODI if the RODI reservoir is empty. So what we can do is we can add a third input in here, and then what we would do is we would grab a water sensor. We would put that water sensor all the way at the bottom of your freshwater reservoir. And if, the, if that sensor is, is dry, then don't run it. So now we have a generic outlet that will run if the pH is below four, uh, eight, if and if the alkalinity is below eight, and if the 
water sensor is wet. Ah, now can I change that to or to have it like if any of these things are met? That is correct, yeah. So what you could do is you could have it on an or. Um, it probably wouldn't work in this scenario, but you could do that. And you could do that by the combiner mode. If you can see right here, I'm pointing to it. There's a combiner mode and you can drop it down and or or. So you can select what you do, which is something that there are some controllers out there in the market, competing controllers that don't allow you to do that. You can only use one of the combiner modes and you kind of if you want to use a different combiner mode, you're kind of stuck. You can't. Okay, so now I'm really geeking out on this Hydros thing. I'm seeing where I can really dive into this and diversify it on my system and start to take over stuff on my tank. I got to hang up with you and go get to work. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, if you have any questions, if you have any, anything you need, you need, just give me a call as always. I can, you know, we can share screen and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, thanks, Carlos. All right, man, talk to you later. Mm -hmm.